Yo, what day, ladies and gents, how's it going? Recently, I showed how to fit the Arrow Indy Race Titanium uh, Slip-On Silencer to the Aprilia Touareg 660, uh, but I also mentioned that I had the full system to fit, and uh, I fitted it. So uh, what I'm gonna do is go back in time and show you through how easy it was or how difficult it was to actually fit this, um, uh, the, the link pipes and uh, decat. Um, and I have to say, it was a little bit trickier than I was expecting. So as you can see, I did get it to fit, and it's got the uh, SW Motec sump guard and a pretty crash bars and all that sort of stuff. So I did make it work with all of this, but uh, yeah, I'll talk about the compatibility issues afterwards. Right, I suppose we best get to it, to the garage. And keep that bar from a side down. First things first, uh, we're gonna have to get off the SW Motec sump guard. If you've got the original equipment sump guard, then you'll have to remove that. Uh, if you want to see how to fit and remove the SW Motec sump guard, uh, check out my video. I'll put a link up above about now. Um, that will show you how to remove the actual uh, Prudia sump guard as well. Um, then once I've taken that sump guard off, I'm going to have to remove the silencer, which again, you can see how to uh, put the silencer on, which is a reversal of how to remove it in my previous video on how to fit the silencer to this bike so i'm not going to go through that here now all we're going to go through on this video is how to actually remove the uh, downpipe the collector um, and cat and uh, refit the arrow stainless steel version without the cat it should keep the video a little bit more concise right well that's the bike stripped down now to uh, the components that we need to be able to get to so what we've got here is the collector um, and catalytic converter all in the one uh, part there. Now I'll go through the tools we need in a second um, but we've basically got to disconnect it from the frame and from the engine and also take off the lambda sensors. So this is where we disconnect it from the uh, bike's frame. Then we've got four nuts up here to disconnect it from the engine. And then also up there under the radiator, you can see we've got the two lambda sensors, which we need to remove. These are the tools we need for it. You've got a 17 millimeter for the lambda sensors, a 10 mil for the uh, downpipe uh, nuts, which connect to the engine. And then you've got a 13 mil and a six mil to do the uh, frame belts. Although I've not done so for this video, it's probably best to have cleaned the bike properly because that means you've got uh, cleaner access to all the nuts and bolts and stuff. Um, but mine's not too bad. Uh, and because I'm throwing away this exhaust effectively, I'm well, not throwing it away, but I'll be putting it at the back of my garage to get dusty till I sell the bike. I can just uh, clean that up once it's all off and stuff. No problem at all. First things first, I am going to try and loosen off the Lambda sensors because I don't want to be putting any strain on the wiring for them once the exhaust drops down. So once I've done the lambda sensors, then I'll undo the flange bolts and uh, then I'll do the last one, which will be down um, at the bottom of the frame there. So let's try and get these lambda sensor ones off, shall we? One of the problems with the lambda sensors is because they're connected to the wiring loom, you're twisting as you wind them on. Um, and we don't really want to be stressing the cables. So I'm going to basically just feel these just to see if it feels like I'm tightening everything up too much. I don't want to cause any stress on the wires. Um, ideally, you'd disconnect them uh, and because then you can spin them freely. But I'm not quite sure where in the loom under the tank that the uh, Lambda sensor wiring is. So I wouldn't be able to just disconnect them as easily. Right, let's get these loosened off, shall we? Like I say, 17 mil for these and I have already loosened them. That's one done, and it's disappeared off up under the uh, radiator there, so I'm going to have to find that <laughs> afterwards, um, but that came off okay. I'm going to do the other one from the other side, but I'll keep the camera here just because the view's probably slightly better, not that you can see anything when my hands are in the way. This first one wasn't too bad to get off, um, it felt like there was more slack in the wire and I imagine it's probably got a cleaner run through the bike there, but that side there was quite difficult, um, mainly getting your hands into it 
What I'm going to do now is just slacken off the, uh, the nuts up here on the flange and I'm also going to slacken off the mount to the engine. 10 mil up here. Now to slacken off this engine mount. Now I want to completely remove these uh, exhaust flange bolts. Right, with them all removed, I should now pretty much be able to uh, take off these downpipes completely. So uh, last thing to do is drop out this bolt here. And yep, all nice and loosey loosey and off they come. So that is the uh, collector and catalytic converter removed. It's all a little bit dirty around here so I'm going to give that a little bit of clean up, do that off camera um, and then that's uh, one of the lambda sensors and there's the other okay to make installation of the oxygen sensor lambda sensors on the new exhaust easier um, I think I've got to remove this panel here which might mean that I'm going to have to remove the engine bars again which is kind of sucky um, I've got video on installing the engine bar so I don't need to show you how to do that so uh, yeah if that's something you've got fitted to your bike then you can look at that video or, or you'll already know how to do it because you'll have already fitted them yourselves but to remove this panel here I've got a little pin here which I need to remove and also there's some here and here which uh, I need to take out and I really do think I'm probably going to have to uh, remove the engine bars. Okay, to remove this and this, you need a T25. Um. Okay, so the purpose for taking off that plastic cover is so that you can get to the lambda sensor plug, which is here. So then you need to uh, just disconnect that, and that way when you put the lambda sensor onto the new exhaust, you're not twisting the cable up, um, causing it to uh, put stress on it and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I should have done this at the start. Okay, this is a little bit of a fiddly one, so you can't take this off without disconnecting it from the little clamp there. And I couldn't work out how to get the little clamp off, but actually, if you poke your finger up into it, behind it and then just push it down it's dead simple it's dead simple if you know how but yeah there's just a little pushy thing there which helps you get it off the clamp and now i should be able to disconnect it um no problem at all there we go that's off just pushing in on the top i could have possibly done it in there but it was all just really really tight so um yeah that's off now i've got to do the same on the other side it's pretty much a repeat of this so i'm not going to show you how to do that Okay, so I've disconnected the lambda sensor on this side um, and it's all sort of moving freely but I've got to take it out but this uh, water pipe is in the way um, and there's not a lot of room up there so what I'm going to do is try and feed it up that way where there's a little bit more room um, it's going to be a fiddle, it's going to be a right fiddle um, and because of that I don't know if that's a viable solution because I don't know whether I'll be able to get it back that way otherwise I'm going to have to try and uh, move this pipe work out of the way um, but yeah, it's all a bit fiddly. I'll talk you through it once I've done it because I think it's going to be a two-handed job uh, Yeah, that's a fiddle. I don't know if the GoPro can pick out up there um, but this hose goes up and around and uh, Yeah, there is a little gap up there where you can get it through Getting it back in again once it's fitted to the downpipe. That's going to be a lot more tricky
Next job is to refit the lambda sensors to the new uh, downpipes. Go and make sure you get them the right way around. Uh, I don't know if there's physically any difference in them, but it says that in the instructions, so that's what I'm going to go with. Uh, so this one is the one that came off the right hand side, and this is the one that came off the left hand side, and this is the orientation that they showed to put these in, in the instructions. So I'm assuming that this is the right way around. These are actually labelled up. Uh, this one's two and this one's one. Uh, this one is the left hand cylinder and this one is the right hand cylinder. You can kind of tell because the exhaust comes down the uh, right hand side of the bike so the right hand one will be shorter. These just screw in and as you can see there's a few threads on it and you put a lot of twist on this cable if you didn't um, if you didn't uh, undo it from the connector. So uh, yeah, I should have done this to start with, taking these off before removing the downpipes originally. And now to do the right hand cylinder. Again, screwy, screwy, screwy. Okay. One thing to check once you've uh, got all this in this position is that the original exhaust gaskets are still in place. Uh, if not, grab them off the other exhaust and put them back in. The left hand one here, or the right hand one rather, that one had stayed in place, no problem at all, but the left hand one that had fallen out. Um, so uh, yeah, do keep an eye on these just so you don't lose them, so you get a good engine seal. Just as a side note, I don't know if you'd noticed on um, prior on this video it looks like there's a little bit of oil seepage happening around here I should mention that to my dealership it's not a lot it's not dripping or anything um, but it's certainly something to keep an eye on and uh, yeah yeah something to let my dealership know about I'm sorry if on uh, occasions it's all a little bit dark uh, it's a really bright day and obviously we're in a dark and horrible part of the motorcycle so um, yeah I do hope that the video is showing what I'm doing reasonably well enough for you to be able to understand it and follow it. Right, well the instructions now say to fit the left hand collector um, up onto these studs and not do it down tightly. Something I'm surprised with is that they don't give us new uh, nuts to put on these so we're having to use the old ones which I think is a shame. I think it would have been a nice attention to detail if they'd given us some new um, new bolts to put on here, new nuts to put on here. Then let's place this up, offer it up, and uh, see how easy it is to uh, put in place. Now, obviously, we've got the uh, lambda sensor as well, which we need to consider. So I'm just going to feed that up for the moment and place this. I'm just going to uh, put a couple of these nuts on just to hold it in place not doing them tight God it's really Just very loosely on those and what I'm going to do is while I'm here is feed up this lambda sensor cable and hopefully that won't be too much of a pain to uh, feed to the right co location. To make this easier I don't think I'm going to be able to do it otherwise I'm going to uh, remove the top bolts on the radiator and hopefully be able to just pivot it down and that way I'll have uh, room to uh, feed the cable through. To do that I think it's just an 8mm. To do this side it's just an 8mm up here and it's the same on the other side I believe as well um, but then this is going to get in the way <sighs> the easy jobs hey they turn out to be such a pain uh, I really didn't think I was going to have to dissect the bike quite so much to uh, fit an exhaust pipe the lessons learned eh lessons learned right so these two here are 8 mil, so we'll take them off first which will get rid of this engine bar And off that comes.
Yeah. Off. I've got to do it this side here. Now I'm hoping there's enough movement with everything to be able to pull the radiator to one side and drop it forward a little. There's enough movement to uh, help. There's the lambda sensor cable. There. And what I need to do is feed it behind this hose here. Now before I got it right up there. And I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. And just there's enough room to bring it round outside that cable. I don't think there is. This doesn't look like there's enough slack. Because this is where it needs to come through, is here. Oh, it looks like we can bring it round this way. Now, will that let us do that? Let's hope so. Let's hope so. We'll give it a go. And if it doesn't work, I'll have to work out another way. So to connect this up, just push it together there, and then push this up there. Yeah, that's all right. Um, yeah, this cable did go round the back of that hose, uh, but it's not trapping on anything here, I don't think. It's got lots of play there. Um, yeah, I'm not going to reattach the radiator just yet because it might help me do the other side. Let's go and do that now. First things first is to uh, just feed that up. There, somehow, so it's out of the way. Now, to push that into place. There we go, that seems to be seated quite well there. I'm going to put the nuts on loosely. Okay, so they're all on loosely. Now what I'm going to do is connect up the lambda sensor. Okay, this side won't be as difficult because there's a little bit more room for everything. Uh, so this is the lambda sensor. Just uh, hang up. Let's do that, and then uh, that needs to go through here. There we go. And then that's there, ready to be connected. Uh, like a so. And then push this on to there, like a so. Now I need to find the rubber bit that fell off that. And slide that on there. And then this bit goes into that. I'm guessing that this is for the uh, fog lights or something like that. that. I don't have on the bike. Don't really feel the need for that sort of stuff. Okay, so that's all back done up now. Awesome. Now then what I want to do is put the radiator back into place. So it's just a reverse of what I did, taking out the two 8 mils. Right, so the radiator is reattached. Um, I'll give that a wipe, get rid of them spider's webs. I've also put on the cross bracing for the engine guards. Now what I'm going to do is put on the side panels, which is a reverse procedure of taking them off and I'll also put my engine guards back on again as well all off camera right so that's the uh, crash protection and side panels on on both sides the lamp sensors fed through and plugged back in um, the only thing I've not done so far is torque this down because I need to adjust that to fit the sump guard because obviously removing all that has adjusted where that sits so I need to uh, do that once I've got the sump guard back on next thing to do is to uh, line up the uh, rest of the exhaust pipe and attach it to the bike here. Right, so I'm trying not to be too clumsy doing this, but this brake pedal is in the way. So what I want is that like that. There, like that. Put this through the back of it. Yeah, I'm being very clumsy here. There, there we go. And then put this nut on the back just to capture it. Nothing. 
everything's done up tight. What I did to make it easier was inserted these as I was doing it. Okay, so the next thing I've got to do is put the springs to join these pipes together. So you've got to hook it onto there and pull it down to uh, there and do the same on the other cylinder as well. Um, <laughs> it looks like they both go to the same place here, which means I'm going to want to do the farther cylinder first. Now these things are notoriously fiddly. I don't know how well I'm going to be able to get this on camera, but I'll try. First we'll try and hook it through there, which we've done. And then get the hook that's included with it, which is nice, a nice spring puller. Um, I've got one actually, so I didn't need it, but still nice to have. Um, and then put some force on it. Oh, jeez. Oh, wow. These are strong springs. I really don't think I'm going to be able to do this on camera. Ugh. Certainly not with a spring puller, it's cutting into my hand. Okay, well I can't find my KTM spring puller. Um, I've already cut my hand on the one that's included in this pack here. <laughs> so um, what I'm going to do is grunt and groan off camera because it, this isn't going to be a fun job. Um, and uh, I just want to get it done without stressing about it. So. Um, this bit here is going to be difficult. I suggest you buy your own spring puller because this one here, although it's nice of them to include it, I've already cut myself on that. So uh, yeah, I'm not blaming them. It's not like their fault. It's nice of them to include one of these things. Um, but I suggest getting yourself a, uh, a proper uh, spring puller for exhaust pipes because this one is a bit shoddy. Okay, with much swearing and grunting and straining and stretching, I've got these two springs attached. Um, it's quite fiddly, especially doing the second one. The first one wasn't actually as hard as I thought it was going to be, but getting the second one on and getting the uh, hook off caused uh, a few um, issues, issues. But it's all sorted now, that's the springs on. Now to uh, refit the silencer. If you want to watch a video on how to fit the silencer, it's pretty much exactly the same as my last video um, showing how to fit the silencer <laughs> because all these parts are intercompatible with the original British stuff. So um, if you haven't watched my how to install the uh, Arrow Indy Race silencer, go watch that now because that shows you how to do this bit and it saves me recording it twice and you're all getting bored. Right, so that's the silencer fitted. Um, and I have tightened that up. I haven't talked it, but I've tightened that one up. This clamp here is on, but as you can see, it's not tight at all. Now what I need to do is tighten this up. Um, again, I'll not torque it just yet. And then uh, tighten each of the, uh, the nuts holding the uh, header onto the, um, uh, the head. You don't really need to see me doing this because it's just tightening some bolts that you've already seen me undo. So again, I will uh, not show them so as not to waste your time. Right, now all we've got to do is to fit the pretty bits. So, you get two of these. One goes there. Second one. Goes there. Then we've got this to go on and that comes with two bolts which you've got to put the washers in the right order so you put the small washer on first then a crush washer then a second crush washer and then the uh, um, top hat um, but this bit goes on the outside of that this goes on the back of it uh, like that and do the same for that bit there and then these screw into these bits here Be careful not to cross thread these. And then do them up.
Next thing for me to do is to put the sump guard back on and then uh, retorque the engine bolt that I had to slacken off for the uh, crash guards. So as you can see, I've got the link pipe, decat, all that sort of thing fitted to the bike now. And I mentioned at the start, there was a, a few little compatibility issues that I had with it. I'm gonna talk a bit through them um, and they're only probably relative to people who've got the setup that I have. So I've got the Aprilia crash bars, the SW Motec uh, sump guard, and obviously the Arrow uh, full race system. Now, the Arrow full race system is supposed to be completely compatible with each component of the standard exhaust pipe. So I could put the standard silencer on it with this with this uh, decap, or I could put this can on the standard downpipes with cap. And that all works fine. And I'm sure it does if you keep the same sump card. Now those of you that saw my sump card video realise that that's not completely compatible with the Aprilia crash bars. So I had to modify them to make the sump card fit. And I've had to modify the sump card to make the exhaust fit. It's only slightly, um, it was just an alignment issue. What I think is happening is the expansion chamber on the exhaust pipe is slightly larger than the cat is in certain dimensions. And what that has meant is that it's, it's an interference fit with the sump card. I don't know how much of a problem it's going to be. I'm hoping not. But what I had to do was just drill out a hole at the front of the sump guard on this side, just to make it a little bit bigger, so I had a little bit more um, wiggle room to play with. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I also had to sort of half remove the radiator during the process of this, which wasn't uh, um, what I was expecting to do. And the tool list I gave you is the tool list for if you don't have to do any of the extra bits that I've had to do. Uh, so um, bear that in mind, you might need a few extra spanners and stuff like that if you've got aftermarket parts fitted to your bike and you're fitting this exhaust pipe. <sighs> Why is it never easy, eh? Why is it never easy? I mentioned on the original silencer fitting video that I don't really want an obnoxious motorcycle because I do trail riding, there's horses and dog walkers and stuff like that. And the last thing I want to do is to annoy them by having an obnoxious motorcycle. Um, so with that in mind, I'm keeping the baffles in on this bike and uh, I, I'm hoping that the whole thing isn't too offensive. Um, from what I heard from uh, Gabbro's videos uh, regarding the upmap and stuff like that when he was tuning the bike, uh, it's not hugely different. It's not a lot more noisy. Um, I am making a comparison video with the stock exhaust, with the silencer, um, the stock full system, and then this system, all in one video, which will be up in a, a week or something like that, just so you can see how they all compare on noise levels on a static uh, ride by. I'm probably not going to include a baffle out video with that, because if what you're getting isn't noisy enough, um, then you can always take the baffle out and uh, have a play there. But I, I, like I say, I don't really want this for making more noise, although it is nice to be able to hear the motorcycle. I'm really impressed with the Arrow build quality. With any exhaust that you're fitting, they can't test every aftermarket component, so I can't blame them for it not being a plug and play with this sump guard, um, but that was a little bit frustrating. Uh, but we got it on there, we got it on there. And I guess now you want to hear the bike. Um, like I say, I'm going to do a ride by video so you actually get to hear it driving past and stuff like that. Um, this is just so you can hear it at idle. I'm not going to rev the beans out of it because I'm in my local neighbourhood and I don't want to annoy my neighbours. But we just get to hear what it sounds like. It is quite a bit noisier than it was with the cat fitted. There's no denying that. Um, is it going to be too noisy? I don't know. If it comes to it, what I can do is put the original silencer back on and uh, see how we're going then. Um, I wanted to save a little bit of weight and also I do think this looks a lot prettier. Um, and it's been sort of commented on on various forums and Facebook groups regarding the Aprilia that you get an awful lot of heat from the cat and uh, this would be an interesting experiment to see if that removes that heat that is caused by the catalytic converter. I haven't found it particularly offensive or um, overly hot. My GSX R750 is as hot if not hotter but people wear different kit than I do so maybe that's why they notice it more. Uh, so it'll certainly be interesting to see if this 
uh, rectifies that problem and uh, it makes it more bearable in hotter climates and stuff to use this, this setup. I do have the up map to install on this. It's, it's um, a, a way of tuning the ECU or uh, remapping the ECU with my mobile phone um, with a downloaded map which has been created for this particular setup with this exhaust pipe um, from Gabro Racing. Uh, so I'm going to be doing a video on that separately. I've spent way too long spannering today uh, so I'm not going to do it today and this video is probably way too long anyway. So I'll do a separate video for that if you're interested. Um, I think it's a good bit of kit and I'm hoping that it sorts out the, uh, the flat spot for the Euro 5 and all that sort of things. Um, yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's it. Exhaust pipe fitted, sound test done, little natter. I hope you're entertained, <laughs> informed and uh, edumacated. Right, if you haven't done so already, click that subscribe button. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a little thumbs down. Whatever you do, drop it a comment and la da la da da da. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, you've had safe. Take care and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye for now. Keep that bar. Drop us on. Hey, no, you gotta keep that bar. Rubber side down.